Hey everyone, Pittsburgh Sean here, and I'm going to be making a video that I thought was pretty interesting, actually. I'm actually going to steal this, I will not really steal, but use this idea for myself. I guess I'm, I am stealing this, this idea, but I am going to give the credit to where credit is due. Um, the idea actually came from, from a Philly fan who I think is a subscriber to this channel, um, one of my 417 people, and I'm also subscribed to his channel as well because he makes good videos on Philadelphia. He knows his Philadelphia sports. Um, Eagles fan for life 17 is his YouTube screen name, and four is the numeral four, not four as an F O R. Just just to get that. Um, cleared up. But anyway, he made a video that I thought was pretty interesting about pretty much the all-star roster um, when it came to each position that, that there is on, on, the, on the field. And I thought that I would probably do one myself when it came to, to the Steelers, as in who are probably some of the best Steelers out there. And, and then open it up for debate and discussion here. I actually think this is a pretty neat topic, actually, because um, then it could maybe get some debate going or maybe something along those lines. I'm sure there are people young and old on, on here that are subscribed to me that remember. Um, maybe some of you remember the 70s teams, the Steel Curtain teams, and everything like that. Now, when it comes to me, um, since the Steelers have won six Super Bowl championships, um, out of eight they've attended, um, I look at I look at victories when when it comes to the big game. I look at I look at the victories for the team. Okay, that's how I've made my determination here um, for each position. Okay, and therefore um, that's basically what you're going to hear in this video. So let's I guess get started now. First. Um, this is probably one of those things, like I said, because I think um, um, our our franchise has had some very good coaching over the years, and I think we do got to address the head coach issue. And and basically, to me, the best coach for the Steelers is no contest. Not even I don't even think it's worth debating. Okay, this is one of a few positions where I don't even think you have to debate. Okay, because this is just, he was just so dominant as a coach, and, and I think, therefore, you've got to say that the best coach ever for the Pittsburgh Steelers is Emperor Chaz, Chuck Knoll, um, as, as his real name is. I think Chuck Knoll is and was um, the best Pittsburgh Steelers coach ever. And I'm talking about head coach. Okay, I don't think that I don't think. Um, like I said, I don't I, I don't have any dis disrespect. Um, like I said, um, Tower was pretty good, and so is Mike Tomlin. But you got to go with Emperor Chaz. You got to go with Chuck Knoll because when it came to the big game, he got there four times and won all four of them. Okay, and. I think there is a couple of them that the Steelers weren't even favored to win, but still did it. And he was the coach of that team, so you've got to give him credit. I say Chuck Knoll is probably the best Steeler um, coach that we've ever had. I don't think that's even up for debate. Okay, maybe some of you think Cower is or Tomlin is, but I don't think that's up for debate. Now moving on to quarterback. Um, this is a tough, tougher call because... Um, um, back in the because the Steelers didn't really ever have or were known for great quarterbacking play. Okay, we just never were really known for that. We were known for a grind them, pound them, power football team, power run game right at their throats, and then you have good defenses. That's what Steeler teams were built on. But again, if you ask me, I go by criteria, um, and I say when it when it comes to winning championships. Terry Bradshaw gets my vote, and there are some really bad years Terry Bradshaw had. Um, some years that some some years people in the Steel City wanted to run him out of the city because um, he had because and he was even benched a lot. But 
in the end, when when it counted against even some really good core like like Roger Star back and 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 even Eric Tinkerton, um, Terry Bradshaw got the rings. Okay, those people didn't get as many. Um, Tinkerton, who was probably one of the best. Um, QBs when it comes to stats back in the back in that time, um, he didn't get any rings. Okay, Terry Bradshaw got the rings when he got there. Okay, now if Roethlisberger won that game against the Packers, then I would potential potentially see an argument for that. But the fact of the matter is, he lost that game, and therefore. Um, I would take Terry Bradshaw over Roethlisberger any day of the week. It, it, to me, it's about who gets you the silverware, who gets you the jewelry, who gets you the trophies. And Terry Bradshaw was that guy. Um, Roethlisberger got two, but when we could have beat the Packers, he had that pick six and he threw the game away. That's just how I see it. So Terry Bradshaw gets my vote. And also character is another thing that, that came in the factor here. Terry Bradshaw has more character than than Big Ben does. That's just that's just the fact of the matter. Um, Roethlisberger will always have those those sexual assault allegations on his shoulder. Um, yes, he was the, the charges were dropped, um, and he, but at the same time he settled with those women um, and um, he was reckless. His behavior was reckless. You can't spin it any other way, and that and those character issues, um, it just it just helped building building that reputation, in my opinion. Um, so moving on to running back, um, probably the best running back that we've ever had. Um, I would probably say Jerome Bettis, the bus. Um, we've had some good running backs in in the past, but got to give it to the bus. He was that grind them out type of player um so many times we had used him to run to run out games and and he eventually got a super bowl in super bowl 40 i was happy for them then um so you got to go with Jerome bettis as the best stealer running back of all time i don't think um there's any doubt about that and of course rocky blyer was pretty darn good too he won more super bowls than bettis did but um but Bettis, um, I just think the body of work that he put in to that team, and and just the self, the just just the just the just the the player he was, he, he he was not selfish, and therefore I just have to give it to him. He was just he was just overall overall good. I'm um, asked for fullback. I got to go with Franco Harris. Who, who who can't really? I think that's another position that you can't even. You can't even debate this, okay? Franco Harris was considered a fullback, therefore he gets my vote because just what, just just that immaculate reception. How can you go against him? And I think he was an MVP of the Super Bowl, um, one of the Super Bowls. I can't remember. I think it was the first one against the Vikings. If not, maybe it was against the Dallas Cowboys the next year. But got to give it to Franco Harris. Um, he's the best fullback in my opinion. Um, you know, as for wide receivers, um, I'm going to pick a few of them because, like I said, this is like a roster team. So if you're building the roster, um, one of the receivers I got to go with Lynn Swan. Um, how can you how can you go against them? Um, like I said, just just that just that one play and and, and um, you just go on YouTube and, and look it up. But but that one play from from their own end zone, um, Terry Bradshaw throws that pass up for grabs, and then and then Lynn Swan just miraculously threw his technique that he learned in ballet. Believe it or not, he actually took ballet. He just leaped up and and jumped up and caught the ball. And he even said that that was just a fluke play. But you know what? Um, just just the concentration that he gave on that play um, in the Super Bowl against the Cowboys. How can you go against him? How can you not say that he doesn't deserve a spot on the all-time Steelers roster? He was he was excellent, and and just how he did that, and just 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 that just that play he made. He actually won MVP um, of Super Bowl six. Um, he was the Super Bowl MVP just be, just because I just miraculous. And even Pat Summerall, who who never got excited about stuff. Even he kind of got excited about that. It was it was just it was it was one of those plays. I 
I mean, I it just leaves us speechless how he made that play. Got to go with Lynn Swan there with that play. Um, another receiver, um, I would probably put um, Heinz Ward in there again. Another um, player that just wasn't selfish. Um, he was he was a Steeler since his rookie year. Retired as a Steeler. Made big play after big play. Um, critical play after critical play is even more. Um, um, important. He had a lot of a thousand, thousand yard res, res, receiving seasons, and then of course he was Super Bowl MVP of Super Bowl 40. So, got to go with Heinz Ward as well. Um, how can you not? Um, with the way things ended, um, fans like him and and trust him, and and they owe a lot to Heinz Ward, and therefore. He's a Hall of Famer, no doubt about it. Definitely got to put him as another receiver. Um, a third receiver I would probably put in, um, I would use John Stallworth personally. Um, this was tough because the NC Thick Pin had some pretty good years back in the 90s. But Stallworth, again, he won the jewelry, he won the silverware, um, he won the Super Bowls, and pretty much was a loyal stealer throughout. Um, got to go with Stallworth. Um, he made some big plays. Um, I don't know if he was an MVP in any of the Super Bowls, but he made some critical catches in, in a couple of those Super Bowls to win some of our um, Super Bowls during the 70s dynasty years. Um, yeah, i got to go with him as well. Um, although, if you're looking at four receivers, I would put Yancey Thigpen there because he had some pretty good years as well in... And that, and then, and then, and then, um, and then go from there. I can't remember exactly who I was. We had a couple of other good receivers, but but I can't think of them off the top of my head. So we're just used four for now. Um, then going to tight end, I I would probably give it to Heath Miller. Probably uh, Mark Bruner was pretty good, but um, Heath Miller is probably probably the better one because um, this year he went on a tear, and then he's had some good. He was a big part of, of our offenses back when we won Super Bowl 40, and, and or not, he wasn't there for 40, but I, I don't think. But 43, he, although he was there for 40, 40 and 43, um, he made some critical plays in, in each of those Super Bowl runs. So you got to give Heath Miller the tight end spot. Um, can't go against him there. Um, and um, when it comes to the offensive line, um, like I said, for center, got to go with Dawson. For Marty Dawson, how can you not go? I mean, he was an all-pro, pretty much. I mean, I mean, he he was good, and got to give him, got to give him the the center spot. Um, I don't know all the positions that some of these players played, but um, Alan Fanica, he he gets he gets it. Um, Definitely, I think eventually David DeCastro will be pretty good at his position, but but not quite yet. But gotta get gotta. I mean, you gotta put those two in, um, Fanica and Dawson. Um, Pound C as well. He's a good center. Um, I would probably put him in because he also was. He also played another position. Um, of course, Ligurski stepped up at times when when we need him to. Um, he's not great, but I would probably put him in there. But Lately, the Steelers' offensive lines just haven't been that good, and and I think it basically just a few players pretty much dictated how this line is, and mm. and those are the players I would definitely put in. I'm off to think about some other players. There are some other players during the '70s team that I would probably put in as well, but I can't remember their names off the top of my head. Um, so there you go. There. Um, um, as for um, as for the the kicking um, game, like I said, I would probably pick Sweezum just just because. Um, of course, there are other good kickers, but you had Jarilla who wasn't, I and mean, he was inconsistent sometimes. Um, Jeff Reed, um, he ended on a bad note. We ran him out of town as we should have. Um, there are there are others too. I think I think you had Anderson, um, my Gary Anderson. He was pretty good, um, but but Sweezen, Well, actually, Anderson would probably be better than Sweezen right now. But Sweezen's made some very critical kicks in games, and and you can't underlook that fact. Either one of them would be okay with me. Um, and then and then um, and then. Um, 
Josh Miller would be my punter. He was a good punter back in the day. Um, occasionally on the fan. I think he actually is on the fan now, so um, um, 93.7. So um, I picked Josh Miller there. Um, when it comes to defense, um, for me, Mel Blunt would be probably would be on my corners. Um, he was definitely a good cornerback. Um, not sure who else I would put on there, but but he would be one um, for safety. Rod Woodson, you'd have to put him on there because he was a very good safety. Um, we weren't known for great secondaries ever, but but. Um, Got to put them in there. Troy Polamalu, he's going to be one of the best. You got to put him on there um, as well. Um, and Townsend was pretty good um, for a lot of for a lot of times. Um, um, Wa Dwayne Washington was pretty good. Um, Chad Scott had some pretty good years. I would put Dwayne Washington in there. Um, quite quite frankly, he would be on my team. But like I said, we weren't great um, in the secondary. Um, as for linebackers, um, to me, um, Jason Gilden has to have a spot. He was good back in the 90s. Um, um, Jack Lambert, um, if, if you don't put Jack Lambert on your team, um, if you're a Steeler, if you're a Steeler fan and you don't say Jack Lambert deserves to be on your all-star roster, then, then um, I don't know what to say, really. It, you'd leave me speechless because I think he's one of the best linebackers the, Steeler ever, the Steelers ever had. Um, I would say Kirkland was pretty good. Um, probably would put him, well, maybe, because um, you also have Jer Joey Porter and, of course, James Harrison's had some good years. <clears throat> Excuse me. So maybe I'd put... Harrison in there. I think Harrison deserves a spot. He's, he's just intimidating and I think he deserves a spot because he represents Steeler football even though he had an off year this year. Um, that's why I say you should bring him back. Um, yeah, probably Gilden, probably um, definitely Lambert, definitely Harrison. I would probably put Kirkland somewhere and if not Kirkland, I would probably um, Maybe Joey Porter, because Joey Porter um, had some very good seasons as well. <clears throat> he got him. He got him and won a Super Bowl before he went to Miami. Um, so yeah, I would. I would probably take those people. Um, and finally, for the defensive line, um, here's another undebatable position, in my opinion. Mean Joe Green. Okay, you got to have him on your All Star roster if you're a Steeler fan and you're putting together your favorite team's all-star roster. you got to put Mean Joe Green on there. If you don't, then, like I said, I don't know what to say because he, I think he's the best stealer, period. I think there is not a stealer out there that was as good as Mean Joe Green. That's any position, any position. Mean Joe Green is the best stealer ever to play in franchise, in the franchise, okay, in, in the history of our franchise. There is nobody better than Mean Joe Green. That's just my opinion. Okay. Um, probably um, Elsie Greenwood was pretty darn good too. Um, I would probably put him on the line. He was. He had some very good years um, on that line. Um, Kevin Green. Um, that person. That guy was also another guy who would intimidate the heck out of you back in the 90s. You've got to put him on that team as well. Um, and since the Steelers have a 3-4 team now, that's probably what I would use. Just those three people. I would use those three. Kevin Green, Mean Joe Green, L.C. Greenwood. Those are probably the best um, Steelers uh, for the defensive line ever. Um, there are others you could debate too, like Dwight White was really good. Um, Ernie Holmes, I think, was, was one of them. You, got, you could put him on there. Um, yeah, we had some very good teams. And like I said, the Steelers had some pretty good football players in our position. So, yeah, um, like I said, I'll open it up now for everyone else to comment. But I think um, that's my that's my all-star lineup. So, um, without further ado, I'll, I'll um, relist the lineups for you, um, offense and defense for the graphics, and then you know, I'll open the floor for you to comment and give me your debates or, or debate and tell me who you like. Um, but that's who I like. So, yep, that's pretty much it um, for this video. Uh, more videos to come, including my um, uh, video I might do 
educating you on, on the accent of Pittsburgh. Um, and then I might do one later on um, um, when it comes to the offseason. I'll do the offseason one after the Super Bowl is completed. And, of course, my Super Bowl prediction video will be coming at the end of the week. So for now, have a good one, everyone.